Fossil fuels. Been there, done that. Wind and solar. Great, but what happens when the sun sets and the wind dies down? The answer, my friends, lies in the future of energy storage. Lithium-ion batteries have done a good job, but is there something better on the horizon? Stay tuned to find out. In the coming years, one of the most important advancements in science could be in how we store energy. With our infrastructure getting older, extreme weather becoming more common, and more renewable energy being used, we need to rethink how we manage our power grids. There are various types of energy storage, like air and liquid metal batteries, but today, we'll focus on flow batteries. Flow batteries are different from regular batteries. In a typical battery, you have parts like the anode, cathode, separator, and electrolyte. The electrolyte carries charged ions between the anode and cathode to store energy. But in flow batteries, the energy is stored in the electrolyte itself. Instead of fixed anodes and cathodes, flow batteries have liquid catholite and analyte stored in separate tanks. There are different types of flow batteries, but the most common one is called a redox flow battery. Here's how it works. An energy source, like a wind turbine, charges the battery by moving electrons from the catholite past a membrane. This creates an electric current and stores energy by increasing the potential difference between the two solutions. To release energy, the process is reversed. Vanadium is a common material used in flow battery electrolytes. It's not super rare, but it's not as common as elements like aluminum or iron. While the price and supply of vanadium have been stable, scaling up production for large-scale energy storage could put pressure on its availability. Flow batteries have advantages over lithium-ion batteries, which are commonly used in devices like phones and cars. Flow batteries can be more flexible in size because their energy capacity depends on the tank size, not the surface area like in lithium-ion batteries. This makes it easier to expand the flow battery system by simply adding more electrolyte. Despite the benefits of lithium-ion batteries, there are reasons to explore alternatives for grid storage. For one, lithium-ion batteries might not be as suitable for large-scale grid storage because of their limited availability and potential environmental impacts from mining. Lithium batteries are great for devices where space is tight, like cars, and maybe even planes someday. But there's a safety concern. While lithium batteries are generally safe, they can be risky if not handled properly. This risk is often exaggerated by the media, even though combustion engines and cars have explosion right in their name. Now let's shift to grid storage. We need big batteries to store energy from sources like solar panels for when the sun isn't shining and to balance out the ups and downs of renewable energy. For these massive batteries, safety is crucial, and we have a lot more space to work with compared to devices like cars. That's where the iron flow battery comes in. Iron is super important for our society, and luckily, it's abundant. The cool thing about the iron flow battery is that it uses simple ingredients, water, salt, and iron. No fancy stuff like lithium or nickel. Here's how it works. During the discharge phase, when we're using the battery stored energy, the electrolyte, the liquid in the battery, contains iron ions and salts dissolved in water. This mix is the same for both the positive and negative sides of the battery. When we charge the battery, the iron ions in the negative electrolyte combine with electrons and stick to the negative electrode as solid iron. This process removes iron from the electrolyte. Meanwhile, the positive side of the battery gains iron ions. When the battery is fully charged, there's very little iron left in the negative electrolyte and the positive side is mostly made up of iron ions. When we discharge the battery, use its stored energy, the opposite happens. The iron ions in the positive electrolyte give up their electrons and turn back into iron ions with a lower charge. This process releases energy. Essentially, the iron flow battery is like a big tank of water with iron in it. When we charge it, we're moving iron around. When we use its energy, we're releasing that stored iron back into the mix. S. The company working on this battery showed me around their headquarters in Oregon. Their design is unique because they only use one tank for the electrolyte, unlike most flow batteries that have two separate tanks. This simplifies things and makes the battery easier to manage. So, what's the big deal with the iron flow battery? Well, it's all about simplicity and safety. By using basic ingredients like water, salt, and iron, it avoids the complexities and potential risks of other materials like lithium. Plus, since iron is so abundant, there's less worry about running out or relying on expensive materials. One advantage of flow batteries, including the iron flow battery, is their potential for long cycle life. Since the active materials are in a liquid form, there's less degradation over time compared to solid state batteries like lithium ion. Flow batteries are highly scalable, making them suitable for a wide range of applications from small-scale residential systems to large utility-scale installations. The ability to adjust the size of the battery by simply adding more electrolyte makes it versatile for different energy storage needs. Flow batteries, including the iron flow battery, 
are inherently safer than some other battery technologies since the active materials are stored in separate tanks and only come into contact during operation. The risk of thermal runaway or catastrophic failure is minimized. Flow batteries can be installed in a variety of locations, including urban areas without significant safety concerns. This flexibility opens up opportunities for distributed energy storage solutions that can help enhance grid resilience and stability. The ability to store renewable energy generated from sources like solar and wind is crucial for grid stability and reliability. Flow batteries provide a means to store excess energy during periods of low demand and release it when needed, helping to balance supply and demand on the grid. Continued research and development in flow battery technology, including advancements in electrode materials and system design are driving improvements in performance, efficiency, and cost effectiveness. The iron flow battery represents just one example of ongoing innovation in this field. So, what about the downsides? Well, the iron flow battery isn't as energy or power dense as lithium ion batteries, meaning it can't charge or discharge as quickly. However, for stationary storage applications like grid storage, this might not be a big issue. And while the battery may require more space, this can be offset by placing it under solar arrays. Another challenge with iron-based batteries is dealing with side reactions and proton imbalances. During charging, the positive side of the battery can become overcharged, leading to the loss of protons and a rise in pH levels. To address this, the battery needs a proton pump to keep everything balanced and in check. ESS, the company behind the iron flow battery has been working hard to solve these challenges. They've grown from a small team working in a garage to a company with close to 140 employees and a massive facility for research, development, and manufacturing. Their iron flow batteries are currently at cost parity with Tesla's Mega Pack, a popular lithium-ion battery solution. Plus, with a lifespan of up to 20,000 cycles, they offer excellent long-term value. Grid batteries, like the iron flow battery, need to handle multiple charge and discharge cycles in a day, making durability a crucial factor. But what about maintenance? Unlike lithium-ion batteries, which have no moving parts, iron flow batteries require some upkeep like checking for leaks and ensuring the electrolyte is balanced. This might not be a big deal for large-scale projects, but it could be a challenge for residential use. So who are these batteries for? They're not for cars or planes or even residential homes. They're designed for grid-level storage, where space and weight aren't as big of a concern. Instead, they offer a scalable and environmentally friendly solution to storing renewable energy for when it's needed most. With more than enough sunshine and wind to power our energy needs, grid-level storage is the missing piece of the puzzle. Electric vehicles are great, but where does the electricity come from? That's where grid storage comes in, ensuring we have enough energy stored up for a cloudy day. In conclusion, the iron flow battery might not seem glamorous, but it could be one of the most necessary innovations of our time. Its use of abundant materials, long lifespan, and scalability make it a promising solution for large-scale energy storage. Let us know in the comments below which storage solution excites you the most. And if you enjoyed this exploration of the future, hit that like button and subscribe for more.